All right, using the product rule, we can separate these like this. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x times the limit as, as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine. The reason I do this is because I know that this is just 1. And if I plug in 0 for um, x over here, hopefully you guys remember that cosine of 0 is also 1. So I've got 1 times 1 over 1, which just gives me 1. All right, go ahead and pause the video here and try this problem over here. Then hit play when you want the solution. All right, this is the answer you should have gotten. Hopefully you saw that you needed to use the power rule here. All right, example six. Use a graph to show that the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 2 does not exist. All right, I'm going to pull up my calculator. All right, here is my calculator. I'm going to change my window <coughs> so that the x-axis is from negative 10 to 10 and the y-axis is from negative 100 to 100. And I have plugged in this equation. Okay? Graph. All right, um, as you know, sometimes calculators do this. This is actually an asymptote. Technically, the graph is supposed to look something like this something kind of like this. There's an asymptote at x equals 2. Okay. Now, as you can see, as um, <coughs> the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side is, is approaching infinity. Limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of this function equals infinity. The limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side, from this way, equals negative infinity. Because they're different, because from one side it's going to one place and the other side it's going to another place, the limit does not exist. These two limits have to be the same in order for the limit to exist. It has to be approaching the same uh, value from both the positive and the negative side. Okay? DNE stands for does not exist. All right, go ahead and try this one. Go ahead and pause it, and when you think you have the answer, hit play. All right, you guys better not be laughing at my graph. Um, this is a solution you should have gotten. The limits do not exist coming from the negative and the positive side, so DNE does not exist. All right, one-sided and two-sided limits. Okay, I'm gonna, write I'm gonna write this down. This is basically what we just did up here, except I'm, I'm gonna write it down in words. A function f of x has a limit as x approaches c, if and only if, remember IFF stands for if and only if, the right-hand and left-hand limits at c exist and are equal. Okay, so I wrote this out in symbol. The limit as x approaches c equals L, if and only if the limit, the right-hand limit at c of f of x equals l and the left-hand limit of f of, of f x equals l. Okay, so basically, from coming from both the positive side and the negative side, they have to be heading towards the same limit. Let's do an example. Explore the left-hand and right-hand, or left and right-handed limits shown in the figure below. Okay. Um, this is going to be kind of tough because I'm the picture's up here, but I'm going to be writing the solutions uh, down here on this page, all right? Let's take a look. Let's just go from left to right. At x equals 0, obviously f of x equals 1, okay? I'll go ahead and write that down here. The limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side f of x equals 1. This is where x equals 0. All right, let's take a look at x equals 1. At x equals 1, the limit as, as uh, f of x approaches from the negative side is 0. But coming from the positive side, it's 1. All right. 
All right, and this is at x equals 1. Because they don't equal, the limit does not exist. All right, so that's, we've done 0, we've done 1. The limit as, um, as x approaches 2. As you guys can see, f of 2 is 2. But the limit, it's approaching 1. Can you, hopefully you guys can see that. All the way up to x equals 2, it looks as though the graph is going to equal 1. It's just this one point where it jumps up here. So you would write f of 2, basically if you plug in 2 for f of x, you're going to get 2. But the limit equals 1, because that's what it approaches. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, make two columns here. I'll go ahead and write that down. All right, there we go. So the limit equals 1, since both of these are equal. All right, let's take a look at the next one. As x approaches 3, obviously from both sides, it's coming to 2. And for 4, it just comes from one side, it's coming to 1. I'll go ahead and write that down here. All right, there we go. Okay, for this section, which of the statements are true about the function y equals f of x graphed here, and which are false? There's a list here. Go ahead and um, try these. And then when you think you have the answers, hit play. Okay. Alright, these are the answers you should have gotten. False, true, false, true, true, true. False, 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 false. Okay. Now, what I'd like you guys to do, correct the ones that you got wrong, study the graph, see if you can figure out why you got them wrong. I'd like you to go and put the correct answer for each of the false ones. Okay? So, for example, A, the, lim the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side is 0. Okay? Not 1. From the negative side, it's 1. So, I would write the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of f of x equals 0. Okay, do that for all the false ones. Alright, the limit as x approaches 0 from the negative side is 0, not 1. The limit as x approaches 0 from both sides, it's coming to 0, not 1, 0. The limit as x approaches 1, from this side it's coming to 1, from this side it's coming to 0. Because they're different, that limit does not exist. Um, and the same thing here, does not exist, same limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side, coming from this way, is 0. Okay? Alright, sandwich theorem. If g of x is less than f of x, which is less than h of x, so basically f of x is in between g and h, for all x is not equal to c in some interval about c, and g and h both have the same limit as x approaches c, then f, which is in between them, also has to have that limit. Okay, so if this function and this function have the same limit, same limit, and this function is in between them, that function has th that limit also. Okay? So, example, show that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times sine of 1 over x equals 0. Alright, if you guys remember the graph of sine, we know that the values of the sine function lie between negative 1 and 1. If you remember, the sine function bounces up and down between negative 1 and 1. So, this, oops. eh, it's fine. This function has to be somewhere in between negative 1 and 1. Let's imagine it's equal to negative 1. That would make the, the function negative x squared. Or, if the function is equal to 1, that would make the function positive x squared. Therefore, x squared times sine of 1 over x has to be in between negative x squared and positive x squared. It has to be. Okay? Now, 
because this function is in between these two functions, we can just take the limit of this function and this function. The limit as x approaches 0 of negative x squared is 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of positive x squared is also 0. So because this limit is 0 and this limit is 0, and the function is in between the two 0 limits, this function also has to be equal to 0. That's the sandwich theorem. Um, notice that I wrote this thing in proof form. Anytime you see a show that, generally they want something that looks like a proof. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared times sine of 1 over x has to equal 0. I'm going to draw my little box. All right, I'm going to give you guys a hint for this one before you get started. There's a proof I'm hoping to do with you guys as a class in which we're going to prove the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine, over th sine of theta over theta equals 1. But to prove this using the sandwich theorem, um, you're going to need to know this. At some point in the future, we will discuss why this is. There's a diagram, and it's uh, actually kind of a lengthy proof. For now, just use it, okay? So using this, use the sandwich theorem to, to prove this. Go ahead and pause the video here, and then when you think you have the answer, hit play. All right, and this is the answer you guys should have gotten. All right, so that's it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow.